Hi, everybody. This is Crypto Rich, working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. Now, if you're interested in what is going on in the world, in the world of finance, macro politics, economics, then you want to pay attention to Tom Luongo. And I'm thrilled to have Tom back on with me. We have him on once a month uh, just to get his take on what is going on in the world. So we're going to talk about Bitcoin, about Tether, Evergrande, the bond market, Russia, Biden, all sorts of all sorts of things. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Tom, thank you so much for making yourself available. Oh, as always, Rich, I'm happy to do so. I, I just, you know, we both are a little wistful that Alexander McCurris from the Durant couldn't join us this morning. But, uh, yes. you know, schedules being what they are and and uh, Alex is working, I think, far harder than the both of us at this point. So he <laughs> deserves a morning off. So. <laughs> he deserves many, many mornings off. Yes, and I know. Because normally, you know, if you're a regular subscriber to my channel, you'll know I, do, I have Tom and Alex on once a month. Alex wasn't able to make it this time. So I'm going to ask him again, you know, hopefully in January, we'll, the three of us will be able to have on because there is something available when, between the two of you with your particular uh, perspectives and his particular perspectives. But that doesn't take away anything from what you provide. And I'm going to have a link to your um your website and your Odyssey channel where you're doing really, really well, TomLuongo.me. So go check out Tom's stuff. And uh, I think we're going to start, we're going to do the first few minutes on YouTube. And then the rest of this program is going to be then on Odyssey and BitTube and later on 3Speak Online. So if you want to get the whole thing, go straight to Odyssey. Okay. So, Tom, you recently, you said for your Monday morning, your Monday morning patrons, your newsletter that you do, mm -hmm. you wrote about Tether. And no, I haven't written about this yet. Um, oh, okay. But I was, I was, but from one of my patrons uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was having a conversation on a phone call with, a, with with one of my patrons, and um, this is not something that I wanted. That, you know, we we've, we've talked about it privately. Um, that from, and you know this, and he's a um, you know he's a professional, and and is you know well connected. I'm not going to. I don't name names or anything along those lines. But from what he told me was that the scuttlebutt was that a lot of the fud surrounding Tether. That's been out there in the news, and you know, there's the there's the typical gold bug um, fight around Tether that they don't actually have any reserves, and it's all a Ponzi scheme, and blah 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 blah. And you know, the truth of the matter is, is that I don't believe that ninety percent of that fud. I'm, I've never been one to believe that the, the Tether fud because if Tether was really a Ponzi scheme, was really that bad, then someone would have actually stepped in and really tried to destroy Tether a long time ago. Because look. We've been fighting the, the 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 powers that be have been fighting Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency market, since the first peak back in April, and it's been a six month attack, six now almost seven month attack now, on uh, a breakout of Bitcoin above the sixty five thousand area, right? And then there was Friday. So what I was told by this patron was that we all know what Tether's reserves look like, and that that they hold a lot of commercial paper as their backing. And the the big worry was that it was all kind of like Bitcoin commercial paper. Right, that it was all levered, you know, you know Bitfinex or, or Binance levered you know, commercial paper, and that that would make Tether truly a Ponzi scheme. But it turns out that the the possibility is, and you know, again, salt all this to taste. I, this is a single source thing that I was told, and I've sat on this information for weeks because I didn't really, I wasn't sure what to do with it. But then Friday happened, where Bitcoin got knocked by, you know, what fifteen thousand dollars or whatever, seven percent or something, sixteen point eight. Yeah, and it was knocked really hard. And we all know that that Bitcoin's liquidity is a function of, for in many ways, a function of Tether, the ability to, you know, Tether's liquidity. The Tether's liquidity dries up, then Bitcoin's liquidity dries up. Now, this is also to say that we live in an age now where we have Bitcoin futures ETFs, you know, trading uh, in the U.S. And we all know how that works. If you're a gold, if you're any kind of gold. Uh, better, and you know that the uh, that the futures markets, the paper gold market, is how they control the gold market. And you know what a shock! Bitcoin was stymied from breaking out above seventy thousand the week that Gary Gensler allowed the new Bitcoin futures ETFs to start hitting, start trading, and that's you know, sucked away liquidity. I've written about this in the past. So there's all these things that are happening, and then there's the news that, that Gensler and Jay Clayton have talked about. You know, all non-fair launch uh, coins are all securities, and they're going to you know, and they and they've been coordinating behind the scenes, you know, SEC policy. And then there's the Ripple uh, lawsuit out there that's going to challenge that. And if that fails, then you know, if that succeeds, then the SEC is going to have to change all the definitions of all these coins, right? But what I'm getting, what I'm talking around here is that if Tether, if this is true, 
tether all that commercial paper, a, go- a good portion of it was ever grand commercial paper. And if it, that's the case, then this tracks what, what we saw yesterday, which is that the CEO of Evergrande was first summoned by the CCP in China and then disappeared. And effectively, te- Evergrande has been, you know, is, is going to be liquidated. And if they're, if, if Evergrande is done, right, as a going concern, and they're not going to pay back any of their debts, well, then the commercial paper that everybody holds would be under sincere pressure. And if, you know, Evergrande commercial paper that's dollar denominated, and this, and this is what we're talking about now, we're talking about dollar denominated debt that, that, uh, that Evergrande sold into markets, which, by the way, looks like Tether bought, then that paper's, you know, dropping in price rapidly, and that would pull back on Tether liquidity. And then it would allow for the outsized move that we saw in the volatility we saw yesterday when, you know, the, the usual suspects came in, started pounding on the price. And they hit the market, and they could create an outsized, um, they could create an outsized move to the downside and liquidate and create a bloodbath that liquidated what, almost half a million cryptocurrency accounts in, in U.S. exchanges. So I'm not surprised by any of this. Like there's there, we had a big headline about Evergrande, and then a conf- and that effectively confirms this you know thing that I was told behind the scenes. And believe me, guys, I haven't traded against this information. I just. Because I don't believe ninety percent of what I hear about the te- about the tether fud, because again, multiple times now the powers that be have come after have come after tether and then settled out of court, giving them the J- the J P Morgan slap on the wrist for manipulating the gold market. Right, Letitia James did this last year. We just saw it happen with the SEC recently. You know, slap them with a ten million dollar fine and move on with your life. Right. It, what it means is that what that means is that tether has sincere allies on Wall Street. Okay. So it is what it is. Like I'm, you know, but at the same time, we're reaching that moment where the um where it's become acute. The problem of Bitcoin, the problem of the financial industry, the problem of the political crisis that's occurring across the West. And you know my favorite people, the Davos crowd, are striking back. And I can start to tie that in immediately, but I'm going to let you speak at some sure. point because I, I might as well just shut up. No, but, no, thank you. but you understand oh. where 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 this comes from. This is the tip of the iceberg. So let's. So so what you're saying is is that so it's possible mm-hmm. it's possible that Tether had a lot of investment in Evergrande. The Evergrande right. CEOs now disappeared. They're not going to be able to pay back the, their um, repayments mm-hmm. on, on their. And so everybody's front running that trade, right? So then now, what are the implications? For Tether, if it doesn't have any of that back, backing, and then how's that going to play out with Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency markets? Well, the, and, and hold on, because yeah, that's a good question about, about Wall Street uh, wanting to be on the side of. Um, well, here's the, the well, here's the gig. I, well, you see, for this is not 2017. This is why I don't have to take a lot of I put a lot of stock in the Tether. Right. If you want to watch the rest of this video, you will have to go over to one of my censorship resistant platforms. I'll have the links in the description below, and you can find the rest of the video there.